Welcome back to the show. Here with uh, Toma, season 16 winner on The Biggest Loser. Uh, we haven't talked in three years since the show ended. We were on, on The Biggest Loser together. So this is really fun for me to have this conversation. A lot of things I want to ask. So when I went out for that first weigh-in in the Coliseum, and they told us before we went on air, you know, this is where all the emotion has to happen. You got to bring your story, all this stuff. And I knew what I weighed when I went to Los Angeles, when I did my physical. And so, but I didn't know how much gain, much weight I'd gain, right? <laughs> sure. So, because we were in a hotel for two weeks, uh -huh. and so, and I know you were um, everyone just eating like a pig, right? No, oh, not me. I, I was Are eating, you kidding? I was eating I was, clean. I was trying to get as much food in my system as I possibly I could. I lost weight during the time of the, no. in the, in the hotel. Are yeah. you serious? Yeah. So, you, so I, we're stuck in a hotel, okay, <laughs> for two weeks, <clears throat> and we're we're to, they're having the final auditions. There are like sixty people there. And you don't know if you're going to be on the show or not. So I was just, I was in comp, you know, I was in training for The Biggest Loser. So, so when I got on the scale, I had gained 16 pounds from the time I got to. Wow. So I was supposed to be sad, right? And, and the first, my first instinct is like, yes. I was like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, this is tragic. You know, can't believe I gained all this weight kind of thing. So you never had a, a moment like that. No, because I, uh, I just assumed when we got, right when we got to the hotel, the game started uh, or like, you know, it's all business. So I didn't know what, if they were monitoring what oh. we were eating. I didn't know if they were monitoring. <laughs> so, I mean, I was on my, my best behavior and I didn't want to. And at the same time, I had already been eating clean for, you know, right. for some time. So now if I were going to start doing the opposite, it would have just crushed everything. It, it so I just wanted to continue that you're same just, pattern. You are just on this journey. I was on it, exactly. Wow. Okay, so um, we had this one challenge, and and you won it. And and we you had to you, you had to go in this room, you were all by yourself, and you could eat food. And the person that ate the most food w would get immunity for the week, sure, right? Sure, sure. And so I, w I ate food, but I only took a little bit, right? I thought, may I, I figured no one would eat any of the food. And you did. You kind of went to town. I sure did. I had like, I think I consumed about seven or 800 calories in a matter of a minute. See, and that's why I thought you were like, okay, this guy's playing the game here. You know, he's like... Well, I just assumed it was you had a chance to win immunity, and I, I you know, I don't know, I can go home tomorrow, right? So yeah. if I have a chance to save myself, I'm going to do that. And then I, I, I realized as soon as I, you know, I regretted eating that because that food just made me super sick. But more importantly, when I went back to the my team, I just ended up working out that much harder to make sure that to, I, didn't help I, I didn't hurt yeah. our team. Right. Yeah, because you could win but lose. You could ostracize yourself from the team, and sure. then they'd, they'd vote you out if, if something happened down the road. Strategy involved in this game, I'm telling Lots you. Lots of strategy. So um, when you went home, so you win The Biggest Loser, right? And you win all this money, and you go home. What did you do with the money, by the way? Uh, well, the taxes, the government took most of it. <laughs> At least I feel like they took yeah. most of it. Um, I took some of it. I think I paid off some school loans. I, uh, I bought myself a car, uh, took care of some other bills. Do you have the car still? I still do. I still have the car. What kind of car did you get? I, uh, Acura TL. Yeah? Yeah, nice. it's a nice little ride. Nice. Yeah, yeah, not too bad. Yeah, um, I, had, I wasn't actually even going to purchase a car, but when I got home, I totaled my other car. So, oh, you did? Yes. So, so, like, okay, okay. so I, no, I figured when I had money in the bank, I might as well go do that. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, the money, I feel like it went really, really quick, quick, quickly. Quick, quick, yeah, it quickly. wasn't a lot of yeah. money to be with you, know, you, you have all these other reality shows where they make they win right. millions of dollars right. you know yeah. and you know uh, not to mention I mean two hundred fifty thousand dollars is a lot of money but after everyone uh, gets to pay the tax man you know everything's pretty much gone so so there's a lot of uh, uh, hype about you know this show really doesn't uh, have a long-term effect on people a lot mm -hmm. of people gain the weight back there's this whole theory about it r wrecks your metabolism for life because you you lose weight so quickly that it changes your metabolism and you literally have to eat like 600 calories a day and work out for eight hours to maintain your weight. Uh, have you found that to be true? Is it has it been hard going home and? Well, I'm not, I'm not a doctor by any means, so I don't know what I think our metabolisms were probably screwed up before we went on the show. Sure, and they're yeah. probably and I don't think I don't think the you know working out as much as we did screwed it up anymore. Right. I think uh, I think the doctor gave us good advice as far as going home. You know, make sure you work out that five or six days a week, 60 to 90 minutes a day. You know, it's solid advice that I think any anybody who is listening would right. be like, yeah, that's right. You want to you want to maintain or lose weight or, you know, you want to make sure you're going to the gym every day or at least five or six times a week. And uh, the problem is real life gets in the way, you know. And so 
you know, instead of eating that 2,000 calories a day, you start to eat 2,500 calories or 3,000 calories. You go out with friends and you start eating. Uh, you make poor choices. Um, I, I had injuries. As soon as I came home within three months, I, I tore a calf muscle playing soccer. I pulled a hamstring later on playing softball. And you get discouraged. And at that time, you're not going to the gym. And you're still now, unfortunately, you're, you're going reverting back to the old ways of eating yeah. unhealthy. So it's very easy to put the weight back on. Now, um, So I put the weight back on. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I feel like I'm somewhere in between. I yeah. feel like I haven't put it all back on. I think I, I might have gotten there at one point. But between the, between the show and now, I've probably lost weight and gained weight five or six times. And really? I'll, and I'll probably do that for the rest of my life. And my, Mine's just been a steady, <laughs> just, woo. And it's, yeah. it's all of those things you described. You know, and I think realistically, the most, like, and when you look at the people on The Biggest Loser who were the most successful, they've all made drastic lifestyle changes where they're, they've literally picked themselves up either out of their family environments and they moved into some new role. They've moved. They've changed their careers completely. They're in the health and wellness world, and that was the one thing that I I, I thought about. And as soon as I left, was do I leave my do I leave my the career I'm in now, the right. things that I've been working you know towards, or do I start something completely fresh and new and just work out at a gym, you know, own a yeah. gym or do something in the health and wellness industry? And uh, I struggle between that because it's you know, you've worked so hard to get sure. to a certain point, and now you know you're in a situation where what do I choose? Well, I, I chose my family. I chose the continued business that I was in, and uh, no regrets on that it's one of those things where but I've seen that the more successful Biggest Loser contestants I feel like they've made that change where it's not just a, you know we, we talk about a lifestyle change it's it's more than that I, yeah. I mean you're, you're changing your entire life so <clears throat> I was a professional athlete millions of people knew who I was from football right so there was this football fan base but then I got home from the Biggest Loser and it was like totally different fan base mostly women 45 years old, <laughs> slightly overweight, right? And and I mean, I, I run into people all the time. It's like, I saw you on The Biggest Loser, and oh, I loved you on The Biggest Loser. So <clears throat> was it hard for you to go home? I'm sure a lot of people recognize you from the show. Is it hard to go out and eat? Is it hard to go out in public and go, well, I'm, I'm having a cheeseburger right now, and and are the eyes on me? Is that, has that ever been you a know challenge what? for you? I'm not, Scott, Just I'm not Scott Mitchell. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, but, but, you're, but you're Toma. You're right. I am Toma. And uh, I will say that I think the, the, I don't know if I'm necessarily seeing those eyes. I feel like I'm probably guilting myself more than anything when I do something like that. Um, otherwise, I don't feel like, you know, you're with friends or family and you're out and you might run into somebody. I don't think anybody necessarily is judging me based on that. Um, I think I'm my own critic. I'm probably my toughest critic that I always have been. So more or less, I'm the one saying, like, I probably shouldn't be eating this right now, but, it, it, you know, you do it anyways. Do you still eat your favorite food? Yeah, yeah. You know, I think that was the one thing the trainers told us. You know, is you still you can't you can't not do that. Change right? your life. Yeah, you yeah. can't change. You know, so you just gotta. If, when you do start, when you start to eat something that's unhealthy, you just have to work out that much harder in the gym. So, what is your biggest takeaway from your whole experience of the Biggest Loser? What is the one thing you would share with people? Health and wellness is so much more than just being physically fit. I think you mentioned the spiritual journey. You mentioned there was such so much more to that. And I knew there was a piece to me. I was still holding on to my father and I, and and the, and the loss of him. And um, I realized today, you know, I, maybe I'm not as thin as I was, um, but in, I'm in a, a much better emotional place. You know, my headspace is much better. And I feel like um, even though I'm not physically healthy, I still feel very healthy. Uh, and much healthier than I was in the, in the past. So uh, for me, that's a win. And, I, and that's what I want to tell people at home is, you know, being healthy isn't just being physically fit because I've met some of the most physical fit, fit people in the world and even they had some emotional right. distress and that sure. there were things that they were going through, <laughs> right? And, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, like I said, there's so much more to that. So, you know, making sure that, you know, you're, we're at peace with our you know, things that we do at home with our family, making sure you make the right choices, you have good good character, you know, yeah, you want to eat well, you want to be physically fit, and you get your sleep. All, all those things are, are, are a big part of that. Um, that's what creates the entire health and wellness package. So, you know, I, there's so many people out there that have this, I want to hit this number, I'm going to be healthy when I hit this number, and that's not the case because we know that there's so much more emotional baggage that's around that. So until you shake that all off, um, you'll never be fit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not a... a it's a de it's not a destination. It's like just a state of being that uh, health and wellness. Well said. All right, our time's up, which I I know this went super fast. Cause, sure. Because I didn't get through like half my questions. I know you probably got a hundred so more questions I do. for me. Yeah. I have a hundred more, which we're going to talk about later. All right. So thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, helmets off is now off. You can text helmets to six five five three seven. You go down that little corner there and like us on all those social media pages. And if you're smart. 
hopefully you are because you're watching this, go on your uh, smartphone, push your podcast button, type in Helmets, there we are. Until then, we'll catch you soon.